how is this cramming everything into a small place connected with creativity and how does it make it better? Hello everyone, I'm Alessia May. Although I'm not a broke artist anymore, I do still see the value of going through that rough patch where you kind of have to make do with what you have. And I have some good reasons why, but I want to start with an example first. Your essay is due in four months. Easy peasy, right? You got time. You envision yourself pacing out the work. Extremely organized days with enough time to research, ponder and write. The last week just for revising and editing. It's a perfect plan you'll never follow through. Here is actually how it's gonna go. You find yourself the evening before the deadline, armed with an ivy drip of coffee, cramming words into a page, praying for them to make sense. Bloodshot eyes, 30 seconds before the deadline, you hit send, and then it's done. But how is it that even though you had four months to get ready for this, um, you ended up doing it in the last possible moment? You're not alone. It happens to everyone. I don't know if you're familiar with the Parkinson's law. The principle says that your work expands to fill the time available for its completion. So, the more time you have to do something, the more time it will take you to do something. Which is also why when you are extremely busy, you tend to add more things and get more things done because you have very little time to do them. And I get more stuff done when I already have many things to do, but then I'm exhausted and it's not very good for me. But how are these two things connected? How is this cramming everything into a small place connected with creativity? And how does it make it better? For most of my career as a photographer, I worked with very little. One lens, one camera body, one light or natural light. And that taught me how to work in extremely extreme conditions. Meaning I had to force myself to find solutions using the things that I had, which wasn't much. Especially when I was collaborating with other people that had studios, lots of lighting equipment, but that taught me so much. I understood how to light a scene properly. I understood what actually can be done with one lens. It forced me to explore more alternatives and therefore becoming more creative because now, if I find myself that for whatever reason, my other lenses don't work, my lights don't have any power, I can still take home a very good shot knowing what I can do with one light and one lens. Creativity thrives by finding solutions and there is no challenge in having everything at your disposal. Getting used to working with very little will save you in times of need. If I tell you, think of anything, is as if I put you in front of a blank page or a white canvas. It's very difficult for your mind to come up with something quickly. You might start with an idea and then get another one and then get another one and then very, very quickly get overwhelmed because you have so many things and yet none of these feel good enough to get started. The creative process involves making new connections between old ideas or spotting relationships between concepts. Creative thinking means combining those bits and pieces into a new thing. But the more freedom you have to decide, the more freedom you have to pick these topics, the more tiring it will probably get and the less creative you'll likely be. And by the way, having boundaries and working with a few things is also the reason why so many creative tools actually work because they give you one or two things to work on. And here are some examples on how you can purposefully limit your creativity so it can thrive. Start by limiting your tools. As I said before, as a photographer, I only had one camera and one light or even just a reflector. Start with one tool. Allow yourself to experiment deeply before adding something else. And this will allow you to find out unique and creative ways to use a tool you probably would have not thought of before. Shrink your space. And I don't mean move to London, find an overpriced room and just stay in there forever. I mean, following the same concept of too much is distracting, limit what you're working with. If you're filming something, shoot in one location. If you're painting something, paint a subject only from one side. If you're writing something, write a story based on one single thing. And the last point, very important, complete the project. You know who you are. 
I'm also guilty. I start something, it doesn't feel good, I don't feel inspired enough, and then I want to move on. No. <laughs> no. Whatever you decide to do, finish the project. Work with constraint, but finish the project. It's going to help you because you understand that you can complete something you started and also the process of forcing yourself to finish is the creative act itself. It's not just by entertaining the idea of something, you have to write it down. Write it down, complete it, paint it out, finish the film. It doesn't matter if it's good, bad, terrible, if you want to share it or not. This is not the time for that. This is the time for you to be more creative. Finish the project. That is part of the homework. I'm very well aware being broke is not fun. I'm not asking you to leave your job or use this exercise as an excuse to not get paid for your next project. Creativity is hard enough, get paid for it. I'm asking you to think like a broke creative and make the best use of the tools you already have at your disposal. Work with less to achieve more and find new creative ways of making what you have work for you. Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe so other people may find it and hopefully find it useful as well. Again, thank you so much and see you in the next one.